Okay, so I am showing you how to use Blender 2.8. The other numbers I don't think matter for this tutorial. It's pretty basic. I just started a few weeks ago. Um, I've been 3D modeling for a while on Blender, and I read that the video editor is really good too, and I agree. Um, it's way better than iMovie. You could do like as many picture in pictures as you want, which could be useful. Um, but for now, I'm just showing you how to edit raw beach volleyball footage and deleting all the downtime between rallies and then adding a scoreboard as well. So I won't do a full game. I'll do a shorter amount of a game, maybe seven points or something, just to show you how, to, how it works and how to export, which is called rendering in this. When you render, it will export it automatically, which some people are confused about, apparently. So to get your file... Um, before you get your file, actually, you should go to the, you should put your playhead here. So your playhead is this blue thing. That is what slides around your video, and you can see there's nothing here yet in the sequencer on the bottom, so you can't see anything. But if there were a video here, you'd see it up here, and wherever the playhead is, is what you see. So I put it at zero plus zero zero. That's zero minutes, zero seconds, zero hours plus zero frames. So it's at the beginning of your movie. Okay, and before you even import, come on over here to the scene toolbar. And um, I like to decrease my resolution so my computer works faster to about 30%. And then at the end, I boost it back up to 100%. Um, it just runs more smoothly. Um, this, you'll see yours starts at 250. This is the frame start is at zero, the frame end is at 250. So I could only have a, what it looks like an eight minute video right here. And mine is gonna be longer than that, I think. So I'm gonna say, let's say 10,000. Because if I zoom out with my mouse wheel, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, you could tell that that's not that long of a movie. 10,000 frames isn't that long. So um, I've actually done it to um, 500,000. And um, Blender's awesome in that you just keep zooming out. And it just gets bigger and bigger. So that's four hours, 40 minutes, or something like that. Um, and so I zoom back in. And um, I'll just leave that at 500,000. It doesn't matter yet. I'm going to adjust that at the end. Um, just make sure it's... It's more than 250, which is a tiny, tiny little movie. You're going to leave the frame rate. You're going to click. Actually, I'll close all this so it doesn't confuse you anymore. Then you click on output. This is really important. This is where your video is going to save. So I'm going to write all capitals. Tutorial BVB. And that's on my desktop. Okay, you can save it in downloads or wherever you want. Just remember where you send it to. Um, your file format might be different, but you always want to click this bottom one on the right, MPEG video, and you don't want to do black and white usually. You want color, RGB, and then encoding is important. The container has to be MP, MPEG4. Okay, don't mess with anything else. I've played with a few of them. They don't work as well, so I'll close. Actually, I'll leave it open to do audio. Yours may be different when you start. The best audio is none of these bottom ones. It's the top one, AAC. Okay, leave the bit rate at 182. Yours shouldn't change. Um, don't mess with the volume. It's fine. Um, and then I'm going to minimize this menu so that it's not distracting to us later. Okay. And so mainly what we're going to be playing with now is down in this area. Up here is just to preview the, the video. So I'm going to drag this over. And I just went and found this file up here. So um, you can go up a level and then choose your folder and then scroll down and find your file wherever you saved it. Usually record and then put it on your computer via AirDrop or something like that, Dropbox, whatever it is. Google Photos, you can just save it to your, um, your desktop and then move it here. I need to tell you, do not delete it off of your desktop or documents or downloads or wherever you save it to until this video is finished rendering and exporting. 
I've done that before and it sucks because rendering takes a while after you finish the video and um, it doesn't create a new file until you do that. So Blender isn't saving this video at all until you render it and export it as a movie. So just don't mess with the files you're using within the video uh, until you're completely done editing and everything's finished. Then you can delete them after that. Uh, this is an extremely long video. I'll zoom out to show you. Um, and then I can move the playhead. People are playing, 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 playing. And this is the end. It's at 48, 38. So it's almost an hour long. Now what I'm going to do is trim the ends. Because usually when you start a recording, there's a lot of walking around. And there might be a game you don't want to record. That wasn't a very good game right there. So what I'm going to do is go to the next game, which is at the 20... 30 minutes, and as I go forward, I can zoom in when I'm close. So what I'm going to do is see where my cursor is right now. That's the middle of this preview area. So I'm going to get my playhead to be right there. And now when I zoom in with my mouse wheel, it will zoom in where I want it to. You have to get that playhead in the middle of the screen, or else it'll zoom in somewhere completely different. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the game. This looks like... They were practicing. They're getting ready to serve right about here. Everyone's ready to receive the ball. Now, this is going to be what we're keeping. Over here is what we're getting rid of. I'm going to push K on the keyboard, and it splits it where the playhead is. Okay. Now, these two are selected. I don't want those. I'll push X on the keyboard, and it says Erase Strips. I have to say yes. And then, this is the game I want to edit. It's the last game of the King of the Beach tournament. And I don't know how much time is after the game. Looks like not much, but I still want to trim it. I don't care about all the hugs and high fives or anything. So once again, I'll move this over, get this to the center of the sequencer area, and zoom in. Now I can be more precise with where I trim the video. It looks like that was the last ball that dropped. I'll just get it right there. Okay. I highlight these two strips. I push K on the keyboard and then I'm going to select these and push X and then push this with the mouse. And now I have this game that's all I want. And I'm going to move this to zero. I'm going to move these over to zero as well. And this, there are some short keys. I don't want to go too much into the short keys because it gets confusing. There's, there's thousands of them. So what I want to do is just show you how to move clips precisely here. So I'll zoom in with my mouse wheel. And then I'm going to sc scoot these over here to, I'm looking at the bottom number on the left. For each one. So right now it's 22, then I go down 20, 18, 15, 13, 11, and I'm going to go to zero and then drop it. So now my video starts right at the playhead. So I'll push the space bar and play it for you for a few seconds. And it is lower resolution right now because I turned down the resolution in the beginning. So if at any point you doubt that it's high resolution still, you can go over here to Dimensions in the top right, drag up this, and then push play again and see how it's high resolution now. It's, I think, HD. It's from an iPad that was set up on a tripod. So I'm going to pause it by pushing the space bar and go from the beginning again. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is make your video shorter. Get rid of the fat. So I trimmed off the beginning and I trimmed off the end. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of the downtime between rallies. So I'm going to drag this to right there. That ball went down. And I'm going to push K to, to split these into two different clips. 
Okay, these are called strips in this software actually. So now I'm gonna fast forward to the next one. And so I'm gonna get rid of all this space before he serves. I'll go to right here, you push, highlight these, push K. And now I'm gonna go to the end of this rally. It looks like it wasn't a rally. It was an ace or a miss serve, I'm not sure, but I don't care. I'm gonna push this, make sure they're selected, push K, and I'm gonna keep going. And I'll go to where he serves it, right here, push K, and I keep going. At the end of this rally, right there, the ball went down, I'll push K. So I'm just dividing this up in the different sections, and I'll just go through the whole game like this. It shouldn't take too long. Um, especially since I'm not playing the video, I'm just scrolling with the playhead. So it's going way faster than it would if I were to um, It looks like that serve went way in as an ace. And I'll cut that and then I'll go to the next serve which is right here. Oh. And so see it selected these two strips. So I want to make sure I'm selecting the ones that I want to edit. And this looks like he got a kill on the first swing. It went over that guy. Oh, or it was out. Doesn't matter though. All I care about right now is when the rally ends. So I'll push K. And then I'll go to when the guy serves on the other end and push K. And see it selected these because they're darker. I'll highlight these. And I'll push going to the end, the antenna. So that was a short one. And right there, I'll push K. And I'll go over till the next serve. And he's not ready to serve yet. He's fixing the antenna. Right here is where I want to start it. And I'll scroll over again. And I'll highlight these. And an alternative to scrolling through is um, playing it. And I'll show you on the next clip. And that rallies over. I'll push K. So I'll just push the space bar. And you can just let the video play through. Make sure you have this selected. And you can just push K at every end of the rally and at every serve. But it takes a while. He's cramping up. Oh boy, this makes it interesting. So this could take a while. I don't want to wait around. See, it's going so slow. I'm going to just fast forward until the next serve is happening. Right. And see how it's jumping around? If I go scrubbing, it's called. If I go left and right on this play bar, or I go fast, it takes a while. It takes too long for my computer to do that math. So I'm going to pause it. Go up here, 100% is too high. Go down to 20 or 30. I'll go to 25 just to make it fun. Between 20 and 30, there, 25%. And watch what happens if I scrub it, if I go left and right. It's way less, uh, way less jumpy. At least the jumps are smaller, so it's easier to see what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna push K. And, um, I'll push K at the end of this rally when the ball goes down right there. Then I'll go forward to the serve. This is gonna, and I don't have the right thing selected even though I pushed K, it didn't trim it because the playhead is like the knife where it cuts. Okay, so K, then I'll push space bar to watch this rally. Then I'm gonna push K at the end of the rally, he had a kill. So now I'm gonna wait till the serve and I'll push K again. And he might take a while to get ready to serve. So I'm gonna drag the play head. Oh, he didn't take long at all. And I'll push K. He sets it and then it's in. So I'll highlight these and I missed that one. And I'll go back to right there and I can skip this part where he's getting ready to serve and I'll push K and I just go through the whole game like this 
I looked out. And I'll push K. And it looks like he served it out, so that's a super short. I didn't have it selected, so now I'm going to go back and push K right after the ball drops. Boom, into the net, and that ends. Then I'll skip ahead to where this guy's serving. This guy's name is Zach. Oops, moved that. So if you accidentally move something like this, it's okay. You can always just put it wherever and then click undo. Okay, so I used my keyboard to push undo, but what you can also do is go up to edit, undo. Okay, so you can't mess anything up as long as you catch it semi soon. So I want to go back because I dragged the wrong thing. I'll select both of these clips. And what I didn't tell you before is kind of important. Um, this clip, oops, I have both of them selected. So I'll select just this one and drag it out of the way. So now the playhead is not touching it, so we won't see what it is, okay? I'll push play, and it's playing the video, but no audio. I'll turn the volume up so you can hear it or not hear it, right? I'm going to go back to here. It's kind of loud. So the audio is on, and the audio just cuts off because the audio is up here now. So if I didn't want an audio clip file on any video, I could just drag this color, this turquoise color, out of the way and um, get rid of it. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave everything together, keep it simple. And this is the video. So if I drag that out of the way, the playhead is only touching the audio. There's no video playing right now. So I'll move this back. And what I like to do is not worry about getting it perfectly lined up with the other clips. Because if you make it red like this, it automatically drops in so there's no break. I'll show you. Right here. It'll play and there's no transition. It just keeps rolling. And that's how you align things, is just drag them over so it go, turns red. And it'll line up automatically. So I'm going to wait till Zach serves it. I pushed pause on accident. I'll push K instead. He's serving. I make sure this is highlighted, selected. And I'll push K when there's a kill. And I'll skip ahead till they're ready to serve right there. Save. <laughs> and then keep going. And he's going to do a sky ball right there. Sky ball and the cheap shot worked. Let's see what he does next. Another sky ball. Yep. I cut with a K. It's out. So I'm gonna highlight these, push K, and then I go to where these guys serve. I push K. And I just keep going through the whole video this way. And it's a tool off the block. And I skip till they serve, right about there. And I skip till the rally's over. It's almost over. Mm, denied by the net. Too bad. And then I keep going. He's going to serve any second. Into the net. That sucks. So that's where I kind of like editing like this because it seems like that's a huge waste of time in the video. But um, you're putting the time in right now. Um, to trim out that and the miss serve is only like one second of footage after you edit it now, so it is way more fun to watch games when they're edited like this because you don't have to sit around for two minutes while everyone gets ready and I'm just pushing K at every serve or every point scored there's an easy dig that should be an option 
Oh, lazy. And kill. Nice. And I keep going. I'm going to skip ahead. They're taking a timeout. And this is where it's really valuable to be able to skip ahead. So it's going to tank top's going to serve right here. This takes a while, but it makes the viewing experience a hundred times better. You get to see exactly what's happening really quickly. Trim with a K. And I'll select these. And I'm not sure what happened. I wasn't watching the actual preview. I was looking down at the sequencer part. It looked like a ace. And I can zoom out, which isn't very easy right now. I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little better where the playhead is. Push K. And then right when this ball goes down, I'll push K again. That was a nice shot. And then he's going to serve. I'll push K right before he serves it. Right now. And right when the ball drops, swing. A little block. All right, K. And then I'll push K right when the ball drops again. That's a sloppy rally. This should be a kill every time. And right when he serves, I'll push it. It's really nice to see the block call too. Um, that time I started recording or started the clip right before the serve because the block call was still visible. It's really cool for people watching to see the block call. And he's going to serve any second. I'll push K. So all I'm doing is pushing K and watching the video. Um, and if you see something taking a long time or someone's going slow or there's a timeout, then you can skip ahead with the playhead. But um, if it's a good game or entertaining, you want to just watch it. So I'm watching for that block call. And I pushed K, but it didn't do it. So I'm going to go back and push K right when he shows the block call because it's pretty quick. Ready, set, go. Good. I pushed K at the right time. And it's an overset. Too bad. Skip ahead. Here. Okay. Pass. Set. Should be a kill. Yeah, it's a kill. When someone pulls like that to the middle of the court, it should be a kill. Block call. Nice set, nice line. Could have been out, but too close to let go. Now, here comes the serve. Skyball, could be game point then. I can't hear them say the score. It's a nice little play. Dropped elbow, Cuddy. Quick set. So right when he shows the block call, oh, he didn't show a block call. Interesting. Cut it, you can serve. I'll make sure these are selected. He's cramping up. He's down. So the other team should cruise to victory now. Now that he's really cramping up. And this is why we get rid of the fat because that would have been a long time to sit through watching. Nice kill. He's cramping up. Stretching. We don't care. There we go. The action. Pass. Set out of the net. And dink. And that's it. So see, the playhead keeps on going. And um, that's okay right now. I'll pause it. 
and I want to make sure that these big gaps aren't a mistake um, and that they're, there's no playing during that time. So it looks like that one's not a mistake. That was between, oh, that's a timeout probably. And then this one looks like it just took a while. Push play. Yeah, he's stretching because he was cramping at the beginning of the game too. So what I'm going to do is scroll to where um, the beginning of the video is right here in the middle of my sequencer. And I'll zoom in. And I'll push 0 plus 0, 0. That's the beginning of the video. So my playhead goes here and I'll pause it to go to 0 plus 0, 0. So that's 0 minutes, 0 seconds and zero frames into the movie. And this is gonna be cool. I'm gonna show you what I do now. So this is um, playing, non-playing, playing, non-playing, playing, non-playing. Non so you can see that a lot of it is just downtime. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. But I'm gonna show you how I hold shift and click and drag to select the downtime parts. So I'm going to do that for the whole thing, and you can see that the the parts that I'm going to delete are small, are bigger than the play time. So that was a good rally right there. It looks like this is a downtime, 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 and I just do this for the whole video. And I'm going to scroll to the right, and I hold shift the entire time. Oh yeah, that was the missed serve. That's super short time. And I'm scrolling. Just keep going. And keep in mind that a game could be, um, if it's 21 to 19 at the end of a game, that's, that's 40 rally so this could be 40 sections long right and I let go of shift to scroll I didn't say that before let go of shift and I push shift again to do this and it's good that the last one is um, light colored that means I didn't mess up anything on the way and what I'm gonna do is zoom out so you can see the whole game um, and I'll scroll over a little bit more there you go so this whole game is Rally, downtime, rally, downtime, rally, downtime, the whole way through. Now what I'm going to do is push X. And everything I've selected, the dark parts, are going to be deleted. So I'll push X and then say erase strips. Now you can see all we have left are the um, plays, the actions, the rallies. And what this is the best part I've learned is as long as your playhead is not in the middle, as long as it's to the left of the video, you could push Shift delete and then it deletes all those gaps so now I'll show you the beginning of the video I'll zoom in and push play and there's no gap anymore it goes right from the point being scored to the serve right now so it's really fast to watch a game And if you see an error like that, then you can always just go in and delete it manually. So I did most of the work already, but inevitably there'll be some point where it's a little too long. So in the beginning, right here, I'll push pause, and I'll highlight these, and push K. Now I can um, push play again. Make sure this is the part I want to delete. Yep, push pause and then highlight these two and just push X and erase strips. And now I move my playhead over and push um, shift delete or shift backspace if you're on a PC and um, it gives rid of those gaps. So I'm going to assume that all of these are pretty good. I'm going to go to this long rally just to make sure it's actually a rally. Um, I see it's a big space right here. So yeah, it looks like it's a legit rally. I didn't mess up or skip a point. So save, yeah. It just goes on and on.
<laughs> that was pretty good. He's cramping up. He's staying down a long time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so now I have reduced all those gaps. Now what I'm going to do is um, add a scoreboard. So what you need to do is say add text. And what it does is creates a little box right here. I'll zoom in for you so you can see it. It's tiny, right? It's only, let's push play and see how long it is. It's less than a second long. So I'm going to drag it and zoom out and drag it and zoom out. And I want it to be the same length as all my clips because, I'll select it again and drag it, because um, this is going to be part of the scoreboard. So I will show you. Um, Blender is so cool because you can see the numbers that pop up when you drag this. You just want to make a match up. It's 9,653 frames long. That's fine. I'm going to format this so you can actually see it right now. It's at the very, it's tiny. It's at the very bottom. But what happens is as long as I'm selected on the text, not the video or the audio, but the text, um, I can edit it. So first, I'm going to say um, the team on our side is Eric and Dale. And I push Enter. Now the text says Eric and Dale. Then I'll go down to font size. It's obviously too small because we can't even see it. And I'll make it big. And where is it? Let's see. Can I drag this down? Let's see. There we go. So my preview area can be tiny or big, but you can just move it around as much as you want. Um, and you can also like see this little arrow. You can drag this out and in, and um, you can move. I think I think everything you can move like that. But um, I just want to keep it the same. So I like two rows of things. So I can see the files I'm getting. You can see Eric and Dale right here. And once again, that resolution is turned really far down. So I'm going to turn it up just to make sure the, the font is good. That's fine. Now I'm going to move it. X coordinates are left and right. I'm going to go to the left. And I think it's too big. I'm going to shrink it down. And now I'm going to change the color. I like yellow. Or let's do green. And then um, what else can I do? I can move it up or down. I'm going to put it right there. And I think I'm going to move it left a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do is select the box, push Control C to copy it, Control Paste. It goes right above. So I have two identical ones. I'll zoom out so you can see. And this is not going to be Eric and Dale. It's going to be somebody else. Um, let's move it up with the Y coordinates. It's going to be Mike. Well, who ends up winning it? Zach and Mike. Okay, so now I have names for a scoreboard and um, I can do a different font if I want to, but for now I'm going to keep it simple. Um, well, you can handle it. I'm going to push open font. I have a font saved to my desktop. It's called Roof and I like doing bold. Um, so I'll open that and it's changed. And I'll select the other one too and do the same font. I saved it to my desk. You can get any font you want on the internet. You just Google search font. Um, and I like the all caps. It's fine. And then what I want to do is do, um, I can't do the score inside this box because it's going to be changing every time. So then I'd have to update everything. So what I want to do is uh, copy and paste again. But this one's going to be the score. So I'm going to say 0. Enter and move it to the right. And then I'm going to copy that and paste. This one is going to say 0. It's going to be moved down. So I'm going to drag the X or the Y to the left. And then 
I'm actually clicking with my mouse and dragging it. You can click on these arrows too, and they move incrementally. And what else you can do, if you're not satisfied with that, you can click it and then write a decimal, however tiny you want to, to move it so infinitesimally small. And you push enter, and then it goes there. So it says 0 0.03, but if I click it, it's really that crazy number. It's super precise. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. I like the colors. It stands out against the sand. I'm going to now go to the first point scored. So it's 0, 0. I push play with the space bar. And... There it is. And that coincidentally lines up with where I edited before. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening. This line is that first, the end of the first rally, right? But I don't know who scored it by just looking at these lines. So I have to watch the preview to see who scored. I see that Zach is serving the ball, so he scored. This is Zach. This bar right here, the bottom one. So I'm going to actually change his score by pushing K and then selecting this one and going over here to push 1 and enter. Now, watch what happens as the rally or as the game goes on. 0 0, it changes to 0 1. Okay. Now, Zach hit it out right here. So what I'm going to do is give Eric and Dale a point. I select that, push K. Select this, push one, enter. Okay, so now it's going, going, going. I'll scroll over to see what's going on. And um, Mike and Zach scored the point. I'll go here, push K, push this, change it to two. And I'll play again. Mike hits an ace. So I'll make sure this is selected, push K. This is going to be a uh, 3, enter. So let's watch. Oh, you know what happened? This is good because um, an ace serve is the shortest rally you can have, right? So what happened was I was zoomed out too far. I clicked on the wrong box. So you can see the score goes from 0 right here to 2 and then to 1. So what happened was I split that clip and then added a, a 2 here instead of here. So I'm going to change this to 1, enter, and this is the 2, enter, and now this is the 3 like it should be, and let's see how that progresses, if it's correct. Yep, 2, and then ace is 3. Perfect. And this is going to be another point for them. So I'll move it over here. And you see how it's jumping around again? I'm going to, again, move my resolution down to 20, in the 20s. <clears throat> 25. Enter. Okay, so I'm going to click here, push K. This is going to be 4. And then push play. And it might seem like this takes a long time, but it doesn't because it's already... Um, this was a point that I missed. So I can see where each rally ends. So I don't have to watch the whole thing again. I can go to here, and it looks like it was a serve that went out. So I'll just select this box, push K, and it was 1. So now I'm going to change this one to 2. And push play. I'm going to skip ahead to the end of the rally. And it looks like Mike and Zach got that point. I'm going to select this and make it two different clips by pushing K. This is going to be five. And play. And I can scroll out now and move it over. And I'll go to the end. The Dale's serving, so I know that they got the point. I'll push spacebar to pause it. It's much easier. I'll push K to make it two different ones. This is not long. no longer th two, it's three. Enter. And I go to here, and um, sometimes it's easier to play it. Sometimes it's easier to pause it and just jump. So Mike is serving this, so I know that right here um, is the end of the rally, and Mike got the point. So I'll highlight that and move it to six. 
and then I look who's serving here. It's Mike again. So he got the point. It's going to be split. This is going to be seven. Oops, I changed the wrong one again. I'll change that back to six. Sometimes I don't even look at the screen. I just type in the numbers, and it doesn't work all the time. This person is serving. Looks like Eric is serving, so I'll push K. Oh, wrong one. I'll push undo. Select this, push K. Make this four instead of three. Then I'll go to the next one. Zach is serving. That means the score is eight. To four. I changed the wrong one again. Man, so this is eight. Enter. That's what happens. You don't push enter and it messes you up. This is seven. Good. And this is going to be uh, Mike got aced. It looks like Dale's serving. So right here, split them, select this, push five, enter. And then go to the next point scored. This is uh, Mike serving the sky ball. So he scored the last point. We'll push K. So like this, push nine. This is pretty easy. And it's fun to watch the clip. Looks like he's on the ground. So Mike must have gotten that point again. Let's go K. Just like that, push 10. We're gonna go to the next point. Who's serving? It's Eric. So Eric got that point. Go to here, push K. This is six. Go to the next point. It looks like Zach is serving. So Zach got the point, we'll push K. 11. And then the next one is gonna be at the end of my sequencer. It looks like Zach is serving, so they got to 12. Push K to split it. And this turns to 12. We'll scroll over and just keep it going. Looks like someone got an ace or a missed serve. That's a missed serve, so K. And um, that means Dale and Eric got it, so it turns from six to seven. We'll go to the next point. Looks like Mike is serving, so they get K and then 13. Oop, changed the wrong one again. So this is 13, and then this is 12. You obviously count upward, not downward. Looks like Mike is serving, so they get a K, and then select this, and 14. And then this looks like Mike is serving again, so I'll push K again. This is going to be 15. Looks like Mike is serving again. So they got a big run here. Push K, 16. And then Eric is serving. They stopped the streak. And this is going to be a K, not L. This is going to be a K, and that's going to be not 7, but 8. And this one, Zach. So do K. And this one is Zach again, so they're up to 17 now. Hope oh, I didn't push K first. K, select it, make sure it's 17. Fifth, oh, looks like it went from 14 to 16 to 15. So you just gotta just keep double checking. I get ahead of myself, start looking at other things, get distracted. Um, wow, so they're 18. It goes 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And looks like Dale is serving the ball. Push K. This is 8. I didn't realize it was such a blowout. It's 18 to 8. And who gets this? It's Mike. So it's 19 to 8 at this point. 19. I changed that. Okay, here is 
this is game point then push k this is going to be 20 this must be dale serving or eric serving because or else the game would be over push k this is going to be nine this must be eric serving again oh it's crud i messed up somewhere Anyway, we'll still do it. I where it was. So I'm going to scroll right. This is Dale serving. So they got a K and 10. This is, it must be Dale. Oh, it's Mike again. This is going to be Eric serving. K. 11. <laughs> of course, the last point I mess up. <laughs> this is 10. There we go. Okay, so uh, this should be 20. This should be 21. And this should be. 22. Okay, let's go back and see where I messed up. Zoom out. Actually, let's zoom in and just go one by one. Nah, nah, nah. Zero, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then after nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. I'm going to go ahead and say that we lost track of the score playing this game. Okay. Um, so let's watch um, the real game point right here. Let's push play. Okay, so that's the end of the game. I'm gonna um <laughs> I can't believe I messed up the score, but you get the idea. So now um, as the game progresses, the names stay the same. Zach, Mike, Eric, Dale. The, the score changes as you go. And um, you have sound. You could do a voiceover, but that's not for now. Maybe the next time we'll do commentary and how to do it. It'll be pretty fun. Um, so once again, you can change the colors too. Like what's cool, we're all wearing black and white and gray. Um, Eric's actually wearing a lighter color, so maybe we want to go back and say... Uh, Eric and um, Dale are going to be a different color. They're going to be lighter. Like that. Okay, because Eric's wearing a light shirt. And then obviously you want to change their score too. So I'm going to highlight all of their score and then change that to the same-ish color. You can't change multiple things. Shoot. Okay, so once you pick the color in the beginning, then you're stuck with it. So I'm going to click undo a few times until Eric changes back to normal. There. Just keeping it green. Don't want to overcomplicate things. And then what I do finally is say render animation up here on the left. And that will take a long time to do. Um, it has to go through frame by frame, but it makes it really good. Um, so what you want to do is minimize that. 
and then make sure all the settings are correct. The 100% is important, the resolution. Um, oh, what's really important is to change your end, because I did 500,000. So what I'm going to do is actually click on the, um, the render and close it, and that stops the render, because that would be a complete waste of time. Because right now, what it's doing is rendering this entire, holy moly, all the way from this playhead all the way to here. So what I forgot to do was adjust that playhead. What I'm going to do is zoom in on the end of my video to right there and make sure that's the last thing we see. Actually, let's go a little bit further. I'll zoom in even further. You can get so precise with this. It's crazy. So I'm zooming way in to see each frame individually. Um, and I'll show you, yeah, from here to here, it's just one frame. So see the ball moves, um, I don't know, three inches per frame. So as you go through, you see it bouncing off the sand right there, and then doing double bounce, kaboom. Okay, so my frame end should be at 522 plus 04. So I could do math and say uh, 60 times 5 minutes is 720 plus, um, oh, so 7,200. And then 22 seconds times 60 is 1,200. So we're looking at 8,000 something. So we're going to do 9,000. And it should be close to how many frames we need. Yeah, not bad. We'll do 10,000. It's too much, so we'll go 9,500. It didn't do it. 9,500. Okay, now I'll zoom in a little bit again to see where we are. And I can, once again, click here and drag to the end or the beginning or wherever. So I don't want it too long. I don't want it too short. I want it right there. Okay, now the export won't take as long. So I like to move my playhead to the beginning, make sure everything looks kosher, make sure this is 100%, and then go up to the left, say render animation, and now I minimize this. And in my toolbar on the bottom, the Blender toolbar, it has a little progress bar that's pretty cool. It shows you when it'll finish. And at that point, you have a file saved to wherever you told it to save to. The output is to desktop tutorial BVB. And that tutorial BVB is what I'll post on YouTube, um, which is pretty easy. YouTube.com, log in, push the little camera button, and then upload this video from, I'll be using my desktop. And then you make sure it's public so everyone can see it. And you're good to roll. Um, what I'm going to make sure that I do is this screen recording that I'm doing right now to show you using QuickTime. I need to export that as a 1080p, which is high definition. In the past, I've done tutorials, and they're not HD, and it's super annoying because you can't even read the little font. So side note, if you're doing a screen tutorial like this, make sure you export as um, high definition, or else you'll get really bad resolution. Um, so right now you can see on the bottom it says sequence render at 5%. Um, it's been about 2 minutes, so 2 minutes times 20 is 40 minutes. So I usually set my timer for 40 minutes um, just to get a ballpark alarm going off so I know kind of when it's done. Then I can upload to YouTube which takes not at all as long but it still takes a few minutes. So thanks for watching. I hope you make some good videos, um, and that voiceover will be pretty cool, too, to have some commentary, um, and I'll show you how to do that later. Adios.